What's going on guys? Welcome back to Life by the Bow. As you can see, we're in the 24 Pathfinder and we made it to the Dry Tortugas. When you visit the Dry Tortugas, you go back in time. I would have to say this one is probably one of my favorites just because of the fact that we came here in the bay boat. It allowed us to have a whole new perspective on the dry tortugas. Just massive yellow tails, hogfish, button snappers everywhere. Look at what she's cooking right there. But I mean, look at how cool this is. So here we are down in Key West. We just towed the boat from Key Largo all the way down here to Key West. So it was about 90 miles, but here we're finally at City Marina in Garrison Bight. And this is where we're going to be launching our boat. And then from here, we're headed to the Tortugas. But we're wasting time. The sun's going down. But I want to just welcome our new 2023 trailer sponsor here onto the channel, Mayor Trail Boat Trailers. And they just made getting this boat down here so easy. And not to mention, loading and launching is seamless. This entire trailer has welded bunks that basically fit this boat like a glove. But as you can see, we just press that release button and we don't even have to worry about the straps, but let's go ahead and drop this thing in. Let's get going. All right, so far so good. Yeah. Boat's floating. That's right. I just backed it in and uh, put it in the water. Mm -hmm. so. did, the, did the old switcheroo let you back it off the trailer? That's right. I gotta tell you, she's getting really good at backing the boat up. It just takes some practice and uh, I'm getting there. That's right, teamwork makes the dream work, but <laughs> You know, there's a couple things to account for about this trip. Number one, we made sure to do it in the bay boat. Reason why is because we've done the Tortuga so many times in our big boat. And uh, basically, we just want to bring you guys something that's a little more relatable. However, I do not suggest doing this in a bay boat unless you have a couple buddy boats to go with. We've been there tons of times in the past. We know what weather to look for, which is less than five knots and that is what the forecast is saying, yeah. and that's what we're supposed to have for the next two days. And it's very important to screenshot your forecast two days, three days, four days in advance, however long you plan on actually going, because once we get to the dry Tortugas, we won't have service. So that's important. We made sure to bring extra fuel just in case, because you never know what you're going to run into. But and the way things look right now, it seems like we might be showing up in the dark, but. So we you, gotta book it, we gotta get going. We gotta do what we gotta <laughs> do, but that's what happens when you come the day after the Miami International Boat Show. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we can do. Cruising all nice and easy through the Marquesa Keys, and the Marquesa Keys stretch for probably about 15 to 20 miles off of Key West. I always go straight through the Marquesa Keys, making sure to pay attention to the channel markers just because this is gonna provide the smoothest ride possible. Reason why, it's about five to six feet, so the waves don't get too big. But once we get past the Marquesa Keys, we got about another 40 miles of open water to go, and that's where it can become very dangerous in a boat like this. It's where the Atlantic and Gulf meet, gets pretty deep, and we can deal with some pretty big waves. But cruising real nice and easy, three miles a gallon, turning 3,800 RPMs, and we have more than 100 gallons on board. So this is something too that a lot of people don't think about when they start their boat buying process, is the efficiency of the boat. And that's something that's really important with this Pathfinder. It has a single step in it. Not only does it make the boat faster, but it also makes it more fuel efficient. So it's pitch black. We just showed up here to the Tortugas. We got a whole audience here behind us. <laughs> got some viewers of Life by the Bow here. So we're gonna offload, get our tent, air mattress all set up, set up camp. And we're gonna be hanging out with these boys here. <laughs> we officially have our campsite set up here, which 
I do have to say, these are definitely some five-star accommodations. We got our tent with our brand new air mattress in there because if you remember our last camping video, we were having some air mattress issues and we've kind of had a long week so far. So we're gonna throw on some steaks, call it a night, get ready for tomorrow. We're gonna do some fishing. So it's the next morning. It's bright and early here in the Tortugas. We ended up putting the camera down last night just because we met up with some campers and we have a lot planned for today. And we're really excited, of course, because we have the bay boat here. Um, but just a little side note, if you guys do plan on coming to the Tortugas this year, specifically in 2023, all of the dock slips are basically ruined due to the hurricane that came through here last year. So there's actually nowhere to dock your boat. Where our boat's at right now, we're actually not allowed to dock there, but we were talking with one of the National Park Service guys, Curtis, he hooked us up. It's like, hey, I know you guys watch the video, so you guys can just park there for right now, but just keep that in mind. There's a designated area here where you're supposed to anchor your boat, or what you can do is you can bimini style anchor off the beach here if you choose to do that too, but Stephanie's still sleeping. I'm just gonna walk around the beach here get some shots and pretty soon we'll be on the boat doing some fishing. So we just started idling around Garden Key before we head out fishing just because this is so cool. We're able to reach areas that we would never be able to reach in our big boat. While Stephanie was sleeping, I hopped on the boat, I threw the cast net and just blacked out the live well. But right over here, we have a couple Cuban rafts. They actually closed down this entire area, I would say a couple weeks ago, just because we're dealing with so many Cuban immigrants trying to get here to the United States, which is crazy because most people around the United States have no clue what's even going on down here. And basically these people they're crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf Stream Current to be more specific, to try to make it to American waters just because the government is so corrupt in Cuba. And it's just insane. I mean, they make these homemade boats out of whatever materials that they can possibly get their hands on. So being over here in a 24 Pathfinder definitely isn't a thing and something we're really blessed and glad to have and just have moments like this that we can share with you guys. So here's what we got going on here. Right now we're probably about 15 miles off of Garden Key, which is where the fort sits. The reason why we go outside of the national park here, for the most part, you can't fish inside of the national park. Right now we're in 100 feet, we're fishing on top of a wreck. And we're gonna take one of our live pilchards here, which in my opinion is a mutton candy. We're gonna go through the bottom lip, out through the top, circle hook, 60 pound leader, about 10 feet of it. And at the end of the 60 pound, we have a swivel and right above the swivel is about, what is this? Let's say this is nine ounces of weight and 30 pound braid. Got our Key Largo custom rod, 5,500 pen slammer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this all the way down to the bottom. And once this gets to the bottom, we're gonna give it probably about five cranks, stick it in the rod holder, and wait for a mutton snapper to eat. But I have a feeling it's gonna be a really good day of fishing. Oh, so that really didn't take long. <laughs> what is it fighting like? A grouper, uh, it seems like. Yeah, whatever it is, it just got rocked up on me. I'm gonna see if I can pull it out. But that's why we're putting that 60 pound on there. As you can see, our rods don't bend like this back home in the upper keys. As Come on, they... get out of there. Get out of there. Get Come out, on, Clay. Get out, get out. 
I got him out. You got him out. I got him out. Woo woo. Ooh. Get him. Look at how we have to cup that spool, man, just to get this fish out of there. That's a big fish. But that's how you know you got your knots right, right there. Being able to put all that pressure on that fish. What is the it? The goal for today is to fish a lot of these smaller rock piles, or these wrecks, just to try to find the mutton snappers. Here it is, a red grouper. Yeah, we like. definitely still ran into the groupers. Too bad he's not in season. Yep, gonna have to release him. Check that out right there. He would be going home with us if he was in season. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick him inside of our live well. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if you notice, his air bladder is all blown up. So if I were to release him, he would just float. So we're gonna send him down on a descending device to send him back to the bottom because naturally he can't do that on his own. It's actually the law to have a descending device on the boat. So make sure when you guys come out here bottom fishing, you have one of these. Wow, and I just dropped the bait and it was like pretty instant. I didn't even get a chance to get this, the trolling motor and everything set up the way I wanted it to. What does it look like? A cuda? I don't know. Mackerel. What is it? Is it a little king? Wow, I had to hook him good. Oh. There he, he woke ripping. up. Yeah. Now he knows he's hooked, but I'm really fighting him real light. We're using 30 pound leader right now. What is this, a 4,500? Yep, it's got those nice little spots on it. I'm gonna hold him out, but I'm gonna let him go. I'm really after snapper. Yeah, no, I say we release him too. But- Want a hooker? Yeah, let's get that dehooker. Oh no. So these fish are actually awesome for sashimi, but the thing is, is we're gonna catch so many fish today, I'm pretty confident about it, that those teeth. we just don't really wanna take in crazy excess. Did you see the way I hooked him? Pro, pro hook set. <laughs> So we just made it to a new spot here and basically the way that I find fishing spots really anywhere when it comes to bottom fishing simply just by idling around paying attention to the sonar and basically if there's a fish in the way of that sonar it comes back as distortion and that's exactly what we're getting on the bottom and it looks like it's coming up to about 25 feet so that means that there's a lot of structure down there Therefore, that's where all these fish congregate. Same exact way we like living in cities. Um, so, basically, we're gonna do what we've been doing. Just keep on dropping down some live baits. But looks good. Ooh, it feels like a mutton. Does it? Yeah, but you I- seem to be pulling the drag like one. No, not anymore. I don't know. There he is. What is it? A cobia! Is it? Yep, little baby they cobia. They look a lot alike. I know, right? They look, look at that. so much like a remora. A little tiny cobia. That's so cool. A baby! So they actually just changed the law on cobias. Um, they've got to be 36 to the fork of the tail now. Just keep that in mind. Whereas they used to be 33. Seems like he's. Oh, there it is. Ready? Ready, guy? There you go. Good job. If I were a fish, I'd be like a mutton. I go in for the kill and just eat the whole bait. Oh, something oh. just got it oh. right there. Oh. He's got it. You got it and you're on. Woo! Come on, keep them on, babe. It's a nice fish. You just fight him so well. Looks like mutton, baby. Woo! Oh, no, and we, that's a legal one. We got the you, dinner. You know a legal one when you see it. That's and what guess we've what, been baby? fishing for all day. You did it. You're the one who did it. You thought it was going to be me. I know. Look, Look at, at that, that, baby. It's pretty. He's definitely legal. Let's, I would throw him back, try to get a bigger one, but he has barrel trauma. As you can see on this side, 
all of his scales are flared out and you can see his stomach's blown out, all that pressure being relieved from the bottom. And personally, I'd rather keep him and add him to the bag limit than drop him back down and try to get a bigger one. Just because you know how we do it out here. We're always trying to stay as sustainable as possible. So this is the trick to catch a mutton. You know how they got fighting chairs on sport fish boats? Well, this right here is my fighting chair on my Pathfinder 24. Who's got who? I don't want to talk right now. <laughs> Stephanie's determined. So we've had a pretty big stretch of losses here. Lots of sharks, lots of kudas we've been dealing with. They're here the same reason we are. <laughs> He's here. Okay. Another red. Wow, that's a big red grouper. Big red. Well, I'll tell you what, I was able to get him up. We're just having a hard time. Catching past something these legal. Guys. Yeah. It's just because the groupers are getting to the baits first. Come on. There he goes. Good job. Let's get him up. What is he fighting like? It's fighting a lot like a grouper. We did something a little different here. I dropped the live pilchard on a bucktail just to try a different rig. And it's been getting whacked every single time I've been dropping it down. I see collar. Kind of looking like a mutton. Let's see. A red grouper. A grouper mutton. I mean, I guarantee you go down there there's probably about like 30 or 40 of these guys down there. There's muttons down there too. We just need to get past these guys. It's what just, you got? I don't know. I caught a mutton. Definitely called it on the money. Here's he doesn't look, look legal. legal Clay's on. I'm not messing around this time. I'm trying to get him up off the bottom. Come on. But man, this fish ripped drag. I hope it's a mutton. Black grouper. Whoa, that's a really nice, black, nice grouper. Size black grouper. Awesome to catch them, but sad to throw them back. Right? That's pretty cool, though. This is fish number four. Another grouper. Oh, that's a strawberry. Got a little bit of a different fight going on here. Something big. Another legal black. Look at that, man. We've caught blacks, reds, rock hinds. We've caught, whew, what else? Scamp, we caught a scamp that we didn't even film today. But man, I just can't believe it. I wanna be grateful for all these groupers, but at the same time, we're running out of daylight. We gotta get home. Made it back to the campsite, safe and sound. Stephanie's burning stuff back there. Just kidding. She's making some burgers. Her neighbors just dropped off some steak. But I mean, look at how cool this is. And here we are in this island in the middle of nowhere. They have all these campsites set up for us. We're back here in the bushes, got this table. We got our uh, power converter, so that way we have light. Charging some camera batteries right now but I just think it's so cool how we accomplished the mission today. And that was fishing here in the Tortugas. But look at this. Look at what she's cooking right there. I gotta tell you, after being on the boat all day long, there's nothing better than some steak and burgers. When you've experienced what we just experienced all day today, there's nothing better than this right here. If it would have been May, we would have been. Oh, we would have been doing real good. Yeah, we would have been doing cartwheels off the bow.
so we finally made it to day three. So I survived the camping experience. <laughs> <laughs> but we haven't gotten home yet. No, not yet, but it's a beautiful day out. It's flat, calm, so this is the kind of day that we want to get in the water. Mm -hmm. The clarity looks amazing. I mean, you can see everything from the boat into the water. Yep, and the wind hasn't been blowing for about two days, mm -mm. so that's the key. So all that sediment had a chance to settle down to the bottom. So mm -hmm. when you're diving these waters, you're diving for steam waters, mm -hmm. fish that just haven't been touched. They're not even scared of humans. And there's just so much to see around here that we've never explored underwater because we've always spent so much of our time at the fort or fishing. So today is a day I'm really excited about because it's something that we've never done before. crazy is you don't even have to be in the water to see how beautiful this is. Let's go. Just massive yellow tails, hogfish, button snappers everywhere. When you visit the Dry Tortugas, you go back in time. This is what the Florida Keys used to be like, and what you see here is truly remarkable. This is what a healthy ecosystem should look like. And let this video be a reminder to not only take what you need, but protect and handle juvenile and out of season species with the necessary action you've seen in this video. Understand that regulations will just continue to get worse as we continue to fish for numbers, limits, and kill pictures. Just remember, bragging rights won't mean anything without fish to brag about. So fish smart, fish for future generations, and fish for moments like this. Would you look at that? We've got clay up there. It's beautiful. Here's Loggerhead Key. Got the lighthouse right over there. You got the boat right over there. You got the husband right over there. He likes to ignore me every once in a while when he gets behind a camera. He's just so focused and dialed in. Look at him go, taking all these beautiful shots for you guys to see. So check this out, man. And it's been awesome being here in the bay boat just because it's allowed us to do so many things that we've never been able to do in a bigger boat. And a perfect example right here, we're using our trolling motor to anchor this boat right now because this is all a no anchor zone. So the fact that we could just pop the trolling motor down put it on spot lock, and we could basically anchor this boat wherever we choose around the dry Tortugas without breaking any laws. And you know, this is our fourth time doing a video here on Life by the Bow, but I would have to say this one is probably one of my favorites just because of the fact that we came here in the bay boat. Yeah, it, it allowed us to have a whole new perspective on you know, on the dry tortugas. I truly would say, you know, that is why they call it a pathfinder. You know, you make these new paths, you know, you yeah. find the way. And that's exactly what we did throughout this trip. And that's what all of this is about, right? These videos are intended to inspire you guys to get out on the water, make yeah. memories mm -hmm. and go places safely, knowledgeably, and always make sure that we're never breaking any rules, yeah. so. And we want to thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next uh, in the next video. Yep. Till then, guys. Thank you so much. Really loved having you guys here. We'll see you then. Bye, guys.